Welcome to North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. Coming up, we'll recap another impressive road sweep and look ahead to the Christmas break with Brad Berry before showing off our top plays of the opening three months of the season. First, though, time for the latest edition of UND Hockey's web series, Through These Doors. This week, the crew shows you what it's like to travel with the team before reminiscing about a first half of the season to remember. Enjoy. Have they told you about the loss in Lunatics yet? No, I haven't heard about that. The fans at Western. Oh. No. no. Oh. <laughs> well, you'll be good for a treat on Friday. <laughs> at the presser, you said you weren't very familiar with the loss in Lunatics. Are you more familiar now with that? No, I'm still not sure what that is. <laughs> <laughs> After going undefeated at home in the first half of the season, UND aimed to close 2019 strongly on the road at Western Michigan. So last last weekend of the, of the first half here, there was kind of a little sense of uh, finality about it, I think. You know, one, one to uh, kind of finish his first half off right. Um, and I think that really led into the weekend and, you know, guys were, were up and ready to go on Thursday and leading into Friday. So I thought it was a good, uh, good start for the weekend, I thought. At first I was like, wow, because I didn't know it could be that small for a college rank. But I think it was awesome just because of their lunatic section. You know, it made it pretty fun to play in them. Like, I liked it a lot, so it was cool. Goals were hard to come by Friday night. Hits tallied up and the penalty kill repeatedly faced challenges. It's quite a few penalties. Uh, you know, some guys didn't get in the game for a little bit, but I thought overall it was, a, it was a super fun game to be a part of. You know, I thought it was really fast paced. Teams were both going back at each other, you know, and I thought we, uh, we really came together and we're resilient throughout the game. And we didn't get uh, too shooken up when we didn't score a goal or if they got a chance, you knew that you know, we were just confident in our ability to maybe go out and win this game. Gavin Hain, however, sneaked one in the back of the net to secure the overtime win. Just have a lot of confidence the whole game, and uh, we just know we can do it. I think so. That's the biggest thing is we just believe in each other and uh, what we're doing and our coaches, and we just stick to our plan, and it's been working. Let's go, man. The physicality remained Saturday night, but with each hit North Dakota withstood, shots on goal racked up. Those are huge goals. Uh, even Judd there to start off uh, the game was a huge goal, especially that first shift for our line there. Uh, and the team, you know, I think it, you know, uh, it got the, our team up and ready to go. And you know, I think we answered. So you know, as a team, uh, I thought we played well. So. I think the feeling of just excitement, excitement, and you know, a little. A little bit of joy for sure, just finish off a great first half, and, you know, all the, the different uh, the teams that have come through here and had that, that first half and everything, and it, it's, it's a nice little feather in the cap for sure, but we know that it's, it's not nearly over, you know, they don't hand out uh, trophies halfway through the year, so if we want to throw ourselves a party for that, we might as well call it a year, so. As 2019 comes to a close, there has been no shortage of fun moments for the group. I'm having the most fun I've ever played with playing hockey. Um, you know, it's just fun to come to the rink every day and be with the guys. And I think it's kind of helping us on the ice too. I think we're just kind of loose out there and just playing our game. And we don't really, we just play with a ton of confidence and it's really fun right now. We're enjoying it. I think there's just that overall confidence of, of one another, to, to trust one another. And, in, in their particular job, you know, 
We've had so many different players score for us. We've had so many different players play well defensively for us. And I think it's just a trust and a confidence in not just yourself, but in one another to, to do your job. And, you know, like on this night, this guy will do this for me for sure. You know, on another night, you know, this guy's going to step up. It's just that sort of confidence in one another that I think is, is a huge characteristic that, you know, you, know, you need if you want to really uh, make a push at the, at the end of the year. There was a lot of those, those moments. And, and for me to remember each and every one, I'll have to probably take a little bit of time. But having a guy like Josh Rieger, who's a team first guy to come in the lineup with no preparation time at all and scoring a goal, making a big impact. Guy, guys believe and they feed and they grow off that and they get better and they, I don't know, that was kind of a defining moment in the first half for us, I think. Good stuff as always from Cassie Niles, Tyler Hasted, and the entire Through These Doors team. Time to step away now for a moment, but we will return here on North Dakota Hockey Central with head coach Brad Berry and his thoughts on the team's victory tour to Kalamazoo. Stay tuned. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central, where we are joined as always by UND head coach Brad Berry from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, thanks for the time today, and congrats on reaching the halfway point of the regular season. Yeah, thanks, Alex. You answer this three-week holiday break after your second straight road sweep, this time in Kalamazoo against Western Michigan. What has allowed your team to be so good on the road this year? Uh, probably just the mentality of uh, playing the same way on the road as we do at home. Um, you know, that's one of the things, uh, you know, we, we built a pretty good home record. You know, we knew last year, you know, we wanted to be better on the road. Our record didn't indicate, you know, how we played. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that, you know, we wanted to replicate what we did at home. And I think it's just simplifying our game, especially when you go on the road. We don't have last line change. Um, sometimes you have to play a little simpler uh, as far as uh, the foundation of your game. I think it's just, uh, you know, a few things, but mostly just uh, everybody being on the same page. Well, much like in Mariucci the week before, you were on the same page. You won a pair of games in different ways at Lawson Ice Arena, starting with a 1-0 overtime win on Friday. Even though scoring was at a premium in Game 1, this was still a classic college hockey game. Yeah, you know, Friday's game, it was uh, a tight checking game. There were a lot of plays that were made out there, but, you know, you had to make sure you, you got the puck off quickly because there wasn't a lot of time and space. And it was a heavy series in the fact that it was physical, but it was a clean, clean game. and. Uh, uh, I thought our guys did a good job. You know, I thought we, uh, you know, possessed a puck a lot. You know, we uh, we didn't capitalize on some of the chances that we had, but we stayed with the game. And uh, you know, when we got to overtime, there was a, a mindset that we wouldn't be denied uh, as as the whole first half of the season has gone. And uh, I like the way our guys responded in overtime and with Gavin Hayne getting the game winner. You mentioned the mindset. How much does the team's self belief matter in tight games like that? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I think it's something that you build when you have success and you can constantly uh, you know, repeat it each and every weekend, it grows and builds uh, to the point where you know, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of adversity or momentum shifts coming in games, uh, you know you can get through it and you can you know, rebound and, and get the job done. And you know, we, we talked about some of the games this year, that there's been so many different games. The first game against Minnesota where it was kind of loose and it was up and down and then you get into tight checking games like in Western Michigan that any, any way the game is presented, our guys have responded and adapted to play that style of hockey. You alluded to Gavin Haynes' overtime game winner a moment ago. Talk about that play if you could, Brad. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it, it's funny that in the rules that in, in the game where you have, uh, you, can, uh, you have one timeout uh, for a 60-minute three-period game, and if you utilize that timeout and you get into overtime, they give you another timeout. Well, you know, we, uh, we got caught on the ice there, uh, a little extended on the shift. Uh, we iced the puck. We had some tired bodies on the ice and, and we were given another uh, opportunity to use that timeout, so we did. 
uh, called a set play, uh, and, and the guys executed it to a tee. We got fresh bodies out there, they executed it. And uh, Gavin Hain uh, had a great stick as far as making them turn the puck over, and he made a great shot on the goaltender. And by the way, both goaltenders were outstanding uh, on Friday night, and uh, he found a corner, and that was a big time play. After the 1 0 win Friday, you exploded for eight goals Saturday in an 8 2 victory over the Broncos. In your mind, what changed from game one to game two? Probably, uh, you know, just being sharper in a couple different areas. You know, we talked about, you know, moving pucks north a little bit quicker in, in a game where there's not a lot of space and not overhandling pucks and just moving pucks to the north a little bit quicker. And then once we got in the offensive zone about maybe just having a little bit more spacing or, or situations where our D can give the, the forwards a puck in the offensive zone. So we made a couple of adjustments. Our guys, you know, they did an outstanding, outstanding job of, of taking that in, utilizing it and implementing it into the game. Following Saturday's win, the locker room was pretty fired up, maybe more so than I've ever heard it in my time covering this group. Talk about the scene in the dressing room after game number two and the pact that this group made after the fact. Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, they could see light at the end of the tunnel. We talked about it before the Western Michigan weekend and we, we talked about, you know, we've had a pretty good first half so far and what a way to put an exclamation point right on the end of it. If, if you could get a couple games out of a really tough environment to play in where there are a lot of teams really haven't had success in. I think it, it was knowing that you know we, we did it, we accomplished a, a feat in sweeping two, getting two games in a tough environment, but also putting that exclamation part on, on a really good first half of the season. And you know one of the things we said as a group, as a team, that you know we d we've done some really good things in the first half. It doesn't mean anything unless you follow it up in the second half. And you know we've talked about some special teams that have been here at North Dakota, and there's been a ton of them. This one's a really tight team that's special and every day that they work extremely hard on the ice and you know, making a pack that let's try to do something special in the, in the second half and not let our foot off the gas. Yeah, you hit the holiday break now with a 14-1-2 record, the best first half mark for a UND team in 17 years. What stands out most to you about your team's performance over the first two plus months of the year? Really no, I, I would say, uh, dips in our in our game uh, whether that's in practice which leads into the games uh, that each and every day that the guys come to the rink there's a there's a commitment level and yeah, I know at the beginning of the year we had that mindset about you know the battle starts you know at the beginning of the week it doesn't start on Friday or Saturday it starts on on Monday so preparation is a big thing and you know we always talk about uh, plan prepare and execute and those guys have followed that to a T. As good as you've been during this 13 game unbeaten streak, you might maybe prefer to keep playing as opposed to taking a three week break. But given the way the schedule sets up, how will you and the team use this time between games to get ready for an important second half of the season? Well, first of all, I think we're probably one of the only teams in college hockey that never didn't have an open weekend uh, of games. We, we played, you know, we persevered through each weekend here of playing games. and. You know, it comes at a good time, even though that we're playing good hockey and winning games, you know, there's some guys that have some bumps and bruises, you know, tanks are getting a little bit empty here as far as energy level. So I think it's a good way to recharge your batteries and get healthy again to, for the second half. And, uh, and, and what we'll do is be wise here as far as how we're going to utilize our time practicing. We will be on the ice, we will be in the weight, weight room being sharp, but uh, we got to make sure that we, uh, we monitor it. The guys are going through final exams here too, so there's a, a mental strain of trying to finish strong in the classroom. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get through the next couple of weeks and be ready for the, uh, the second half. Yeah, well, we are certainly looking forward to seeing what 2020 brings for you and this team. Brad, congrats again on a special start to the season. Enjoy the holidays with your family. We'll see you in the new year. Yeah, thanks, Alex, for, to you and uh, Midco for an uh, outstanding job in the first half here. I want to uh, wish you a great Christmas and all the best in 2020. Oh, I appreciate that, Brad. Thank you. Brad Berry. We've got more coming up on UND's historic first half when North Dakota Hockey Central returns, including a rundown of some of our favorite moments of the season so far. That's coming up next. back. We're 17 games into the 2019-2020 UND hockey season and we have already had more than enough memorable moments, goals and saves to make a montage. Just in time for the holidays, here's a look at our choices for the top plays of the first half. Not a bad 
inside Pesky down low, and that is a sweet looking play. Another face off win. Gucci rips one in the back of the net. Kawaguchi leaving one for Colin Adams in the slot. Three nothing North Dakota. The turnover, breakaway. Cole Smith to the forehand, and he scores. at all the different teams we've had in North Dakota. This probably ranks up as one of the, the ones that is really special. A lot of good memories on that list. Our only regret, we couldn't track down the Cherry Cricket security footage from back on November the 16th as Josh Rieger's pregame meal in that establishment on that night absolutely would have made the list. Expect more great moments to be on the way for the season's second half. We will talk about that, including what's coming up next for UND when North Dakota Hockey Central returns. Time now to take a look at the national college hockey scene, starting with this week's USCHO.com poll. Cornell took their first loss of the season this past weekend, and the Big Reds defeat at Dartmouth, coupled with UND's sweep at Western Michigan, has moved North Dakota into the number two spot this week, their best ranking since October of 2016. The only team on a better run right now is the only one UND has lost to this year. That, of course, Minnesota State, who remains number one after a home sweep of Lake Superior State. The Mavs have now won nine in a row, but they'll play four times between now and UND's next regular season contest. So depending on how things shake out there, do not be surprised if North Dakota starts 2020 as the nation's new number one. Four NCHC teams remain in the top 20 this week, and two of those four have started to separate themselves a bit from the pack in the chase for the Penrose Cup. UND and Minnesota Duluth are now both one-third of the way through their conference schedule, and they've combined to go 13-1-2 against the rest of the league. Those two only face each other once this year during the regular season, a late January tilt at Amsoil Arena. The league leaders are both off this weekend and for the foreseeable future, but that does not mean the rest of the league is done for the first half just yet. Omaha travels to suddenly resurge in St. Cloud State, while the gold pan resumes in the Rockies with DU and CC playing a home and home this weekend. Those games coming up will serve as the last conference games of 2019, and of course, it is a slate that does not include North Dakota, who has three weeks between now and the December 28th exhibition game against the NTDP to focus on finals, heal up, and get ready for the second half. I think this first half has been amazing. You know, it's something I came here to do, and I came here to help this team. But more importantly, you know, 
they didn't need that, my help really, you know. They've showed everything here, what they have and everything like that. I'm just glad that I'm pitching in my part, you know. So, you know, it's exciting and, I, you know, I'm glad I'm here. I thought we've had a great first half, you know. We talked about adding to the tradition, how that's a thing around UND and uh, we did that tonight by uh, tying the best first half record. So, I mean, it feels incredible. The second half officially begins with a non-conference series against the WCHA's Alabama Huntsville before NCHC play starts up the following week against Omaha. UND will alternate between the road and home dates at the REA for much of 2020 with a bye week scheduled for the first full weekend of February. Other than a nationally televised game against Denver on Valentine's Day, Midco Sports Network will bring you every UND home game of the second half live, plus road games at Duluth, at St. Cloud, and at Omaha. Keep it tuned to Midco SN all winter into tournament season for the best live coverage of UND hockey. That will do it for us for this week and for this calendar year. As like the team, we are off until 2020. In the interim, though, all of us at Midco SN want to wish you and yours a happy and safe holiday season. On behalf of our hardworking and talented crew, I'm Alex Seinert saying thanks for watching. We'll see you in the new year.